What's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 533. How tearing each other down hurts us all. My name's Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host for the show, founder of Whistlekick. And if you want to see everything that we're doing, go to whistlekick.com. That's where you're going to find our store. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you'll save 15% off everything over there. It's also where you find all the other projects that we're involved in. First Cup, Marshall Journal, Whistlekick Live. We've got a blog there. There's a ton of stuff. Links to our social media. Check it out. If you haven't been there in a little while, go. There's always new stuff coming out. We're always releasing things. We're making our websites better. There's a lot of work that goes into this, and hopefully you all appreciate it. Why do we do it? We do it all for the traditional martial artists of the world, because I'm one of you. And most of us here working at Whistlekick are passionate traditional martial artists. And that's why we do what we do. This show has its own website, completely separate, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you go over there, you're going to find transcripts, you're going to find photos and links and videos and all the other episodes, every single episode we've ever done, you'll find that over there. So check that out. And if you like what we do, if you like this, this content, this connecting, educating, entertaining content that we put out, there are a few things you can do to help us out. You can make a purchase. You could tell someone about what we do, or you could support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. In fact, this episode is going up early for podcast, uh, I'm sorry, for Patreon subscribers, and it's going up in video exclusively for people in Patreon at the upper tiers, the, the, the video tier and up, right? Because we're always looking for ways to deliver more value. And well, it's one of the ways that we do it. We bring you two shows a week. We do it for free, but we've got to find a way to pay the bills. So if we give you a little bit extra, maybe you'll give us a little bit as well. Today's episode, how tearing each other down hurts us all. This is a subject that it keeps coming up and it comes up often and it comes up more and more. And the more the show grows, the more standing whistle kick develops, the more I've got people in my ear telling me, look at what this person's doing. Look at what that school is doing. Look at what this tournament's doing. Look at... Ah! Drives me crazy. Why? Why does it drive me crazy? Because we're shooting ourselves in the foot. I've broken this down before. Let me break it down again. And hopefully, everyone will hear it this time. And hopefully, everyone will spread this and we'll be able to move forward. Here's what happens. If we, as martial artists, because we are seen as martial artists, people outside of the martial arts do not look at Karate and Taekwondo is these dramatically separate things. They are almost the same. Just as a Ford and a Chevy are seen as vehicles. They're not dramatically different. And if you're someone who's a passionate Ford fan or Chevy fan, that's exactly the problem. Because as this passion comes through, as we draw these dividing lines, it makes people who are not participating in martial arts fearful of engaging with martial arts. Why? Because one of the strongest desires in the world is to not make the wrong choice. And if you are someone who is interested in martial arts and you reach out to people or maybe you post something on social media, you say, hey, I'm interested in training. What happens when you are met with a number of disagreeing answers on how you should proceed? First off, the majority of people when they hear someone's interested in martial arts, they'll just tell them, oh, come to my school or go train in this style. They don't ask them questions. They don't ask them, what are your goals? How much time are you willing to train, et cetera? These are important questions. These are more important than anything. And then you have other people who will even go so far as to say, don't do this style. It's bad. Don't go to this school. It's bad. Are there certain exceptions? Are there schools that are bad? Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some schools run by some really bad people. People who uh, take advantage of others will we'll leave it under that heading. But most of the time, a martial arts school is going to do a competent job of teaching you martial arts. And so when people are interested and then they're met with all of this conflicting information, what do they do? Do they sit down and they build out a grid to decide how to proceed? No, they just stop because they're afraid of making the wrong choice. It is just as bad as being a car salesman. And let's say you sell Chevys and somebody's interested in 
buying a car. It's their first car and they're walking down the street and they come up and they say, I'm interested in a car. But before you can say anything, someone jumps out of the bushes and says, you don't want to buy a Chevy. You should buy a Tesla. And they go into all these details about why you should buy a Tesla. And they use all this technical language. And the person interested in buying a car says, I I'm confused and I'm scared. And the Tesla person says, not only should you not buy a Chevy, you need to go buy a Tesla. And here are all these technical reasons why. The person doesn't have the context to understand that. They're not going to make a decision. Anybody who's worked in retail or sales understands that you have to present information in a certain way. If someone's interested, you have to be gentle with them. You can't just slap them with information and hope that it's going to work out because it won't. And this is what many of us do. This is what we inadvertently are doing when we're passionate about the arts and wanting it to grow and be better. And we're interested in trying to remove the styles or people that we think are inferior. We're actually doing a discredit to the traditional arts. There's a reason that American participation in traditional martial arts runs half of what the world average is. We are, in some ways, a hotbed of martial arts. But in terms of broad participation, it's seen often as something that kids will do for short periods of time. And this is, in my opinion, the major reason why. So what do we do? We look at ourselves. Am I someone who is doing this? Am I someone who is tearing down other martial arts, other martial artists in public and in a way that discredits the martial arts overall? If the answer is yes, it's time to stop. You're part of the problem. Or am I someone who doesn't do this myself, but I permit it to go on around me? Well, you are not quite as culpable, but you're part of the problem still. What would happen if, for everyone, if that example, that person says, you know, I'm interested in martial arts, and everybody around them who trained jumped to help them find a good school, the school that was right for them based on their goals, when they're able to train, who they are, what experiences they've had, and who's around them to teach. There are a lot of factors that go into choosing a school, and style is one of the least important. I have trained at schools that I absolutely loved, but they weren't the style I was looking for. I have trained at schools that taught a style that I thought I wanted. School was terrible. And anyone who spent a lot of time training at a bunch of different schools knows that that can happen. So why not match up the person with the, the school that is most likely to meet their needs? Whether or not that's the same for you, because we all train for different reasons. What would happen to martial arts participation if this is what we did? It would grow. It would expand. We could be the leaders, the example that we deserve to be. I love martial arts. I'm guessing if you're listening, if you're still listening, you probably also love martial arts. It's time for us to take this attitude, this self-deprecating attitude that we bring to the thing that we love and let it go. I know for many of us, it, maybe even most, it is there for good intent. We are trying to help the martial arts grow, but this is not the way it grows. Show me another example where tearing things apart helps them grow. If I look at my arms and I say, you know, these arms don't do what I think they should do. I'm going to cut them off or I'm going to walk around and tell people, look how terrible my arms are. How does that make anything better? What's the best way to fix this problem? If you really care about the problem, the best way is to lead by example. It's to be the best martial artist you can be, to be positive, to train the best students, to showcase talent and leadership and all these other wonderful qualities instead of being part of a bucket of crabs and tearing other people down. I don't see nearly enough public rebuke, it's the only word I can think of right now, of this attitude. So this is what I'm doing. I've done it before. I'll do it again. I will continue to do it until it stops. Because I don't care what you train. I care that you train. 
I don't care what your definition of a martial art is. I don't care what your goals for training are. I don't care if you've spent 10 years training at a school that others find to be um, of lower quality and you are unlikely to fare well in a street fight. I don't care. Do you enjoy it? Are you learning? Do you feel that you're better off for the time and money you're investing? The answer is yes. That's all that matters to me. Just because that's not what someone else's goals are, I don't think that matters. And for the people out there, because I inevitably get this criticism when I, when I say this, there are people who will say, yes, but that poor training may give someone a false sense of confidence when they step into competition or they have to deal with themselves on the street. Okay, let's unpack that for a minute. Let's say someone trains at a school and they're told that they are amazing and they go to an open competition and they are torn apart. You know, they're, 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 their sparring isn't, isn't good and they lose terribly and their forms aren't very good and they lose terribly. Would it be better off that they never trained? Of course not. They've gotten something out of it. They've learned something. Maybe they feel badly about themselves, but I'd rather they have some time training and then feel badly about themselves in no time training. What about the self-defense, the street situation? What about that example? I would love for someone to show me an example that's actually happened of someone who is rendered more harm because of what they know or think they know than someone who knew nothing. Could it happen? Yes. Has it happened? Probably. But most of the time, what happens if you train for a little while and you start to feel good about yourself? You have more confidence. You carry yourself better. What are the things that attackers, bullies look for? It's that lack of confidence. They're not looking for people who are falsely skilled or unskilled. They're looking for people who present themselves with a victim mentality. And if you train, if you, if you train in a, let's call it a quote unquote terrible school, there's a pretty good chance that you carry yourself better, that you are less likely to be victimized because of that. If somebody wants to debate this, I'm game, but I want you to do it publicly. I want you to go to the website. I want you to go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I want you to go to episode 533 and leave a comment on the show notes page. If you're not willing to do that, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, but I may not respond. We have an opportunity as martial artists to grow the martial arts, to expand it, to help other people realize the benefits of this thing that we all love and train and are passionate about. But we have to do it in the right way. And if we spend all, all of our time attacking each other, that effort is seen by others and we are cast out as crazy. Stop doing it. Stop being it. Stop wasting your energy on that. And let's come together. Let's grow martial arts in the way that it should. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Go check out transcripts, all that for this and every other episode we've done. And if you're up for supporting us in the work that we do, you've got some choices. You can visit the store at whistlekick.com. Use the code PODCAST15. Saves you 15%. You might also consider buying one of our Amazon books, telling others about the show, or supporting us at Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. Again, uh, depending on the tier, you're getting this early or you're getting it raw as video. You know, we're trying to give back. And if you have guest suggestions, I want to hear them. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And that's it. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.